Hi guys. The Crystal Super and Light headsets have been announced by Pimax with both coming in 2024 and the Light expected in the middle of the year. The Light simplifies the features of the original Crystal, bringing the price down to a more affordable range, whilst also dropping the weight. The Super takes things to the next level, offering a massive resolution increase. Will these announcements entice VR users to try out a Pimax headset? Well, let's take a look at the announcements and see which, if any, are worth a look for the Sim Racer. Before looking at the other headsets, one product mentioned by Pimax in their recent announcement was a wireless module for the original Crystal, the 60G Airlink. Now, they've been showing this for a while now and it feels a long time coming, especially given that the original Crystal has a battery and other features and it's had those since day one. So why haven't we had wireless PC VR? Now I can't imagine this will be the same experience that we're seeing with other wireless headsets out there, especially things like the Quest 3 that does its wireless PC VR via software. This is going to be a much more pure PC VR solution. It'd be interesting to see how good this solution is and how long it lasts on a battery. Now, indications suggest we get two to three hours out of the headset. If it can indeed last an endurance stint, well, it could be a great addition to the rig, especially if it ends up in an affordable bundle with the headset. I'll be honest, I was a little underwhelmed when I first saw this product announced, but on reflection, it could do wonders for the company, bringing a more affordable replacement option for the HP Reverb G2. It's a crystal without the extra standalone features. Automated IPD motors, DP extension cable, interchangeable lenses and eye tracking are all gone. It comes in at a cut price and it was announced at 699 without local dimming or $899 with local dimming. That doesn't sound so bad and with such a saving It'll appeal to many sim racers and might be a great replacement for the HP Reverb G2, which is showing its age and is on the now dead Windows Mixed Reality platform. However, why I'm a little disappointed is that it misses out on eye tracking and instead will use fixed forwarded rendering to try and counter the performance problems on lower end hardware. Edge to edge clarity is almost pointless if you have to reduce the quality of the scene to drive it. And if you have to spend more money to get it working at a decent frame rate by upgrading your PC, then that might negate the price reduction from getting such a headset. Let's reserve judgment, however, until we get our hands on a unit for testing. IMAX here are pushing high resolution even further with a quoted resolution of 3840 by 3840 per eye. That is an astonishing 50 to 57 PPD. I can see this being one of the highest fidelity headsets in any market and for eye tracking you can help drive such resolution with tracked forwarded rendering. Currently that's done through OpenXR Toolkit but if we can get something from Pimax native in the drivers, it would benefit us on any software that we run. Now this headset is gonna turn up around the same time as the anticipated launch for the RTX 5090. So that might be good, albeit very expensive time. One thing I found very interesting with this announcement is that the headset will allow for interchange between very high resolution QLED displays and a 4K OLED alternative. Both can be had at a bundled price of $2,399, or you can opt for one or the other for $1,799 or $1,999 respectively. Bear in mind though that the micro LED unit will only be able to run at 90 hertz and not 120 hertz. It's also running at a different resolution. I'll be reviewing both of these when they turn up to give my opinion on them from a racer's perspective. The Super is going to be a fully dedicated PC VR headset, so won't have the added weight of the battery and other components that we've seen on the OG Crystal. 
This will mean unlimited session lengths and the need for a tether. It'll also bring back that very front heavy Pimax solution. So I'm keen to see what the company will do to try and balance the headset out here. With these offerings, Pimax are showing they are here to stay and have learned some lessons on their journey so far. Only time will tell if they're able to deal with the issues some users have previously reported on the crystal, like the headset not turning off properly and the latency issues. But they certainly seem to be getting on top of most things. And those won't be a problem for the new headsets anyway, which do away with the problematic standalone mode. The HP Reverb G2 was a great headset for the money, and it appears that the Crystal Light is aimed at users of that headset. Trying to tempt them away from the dying Windows Mixed Reality platform with superior visuals and a relatively low price point. The Air Link module for the original Crystal is a shot in the direction of the MetaQuest, allowing gamers to experience better visual fidelity whilst playing games wirelessly. The headset doesn't truly support hot swap of the battery though, so if you need it for more than a couple of hours, you'll be reaching back for that wire or having to shut down your game whilst swapping the battery and firing it back up again. Some much needed excitement in the PC VR space then, and if Pimax can deliver on the promise, we'll have some stonking visuals so long as our computer hardware can keep up. So I hope you've enjoyed this look through the recent Pimax Crystal announcements. And if you have, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more of it. And until next time, guys, goodbye for now. See you on the track.